Hello everyone, welcome back to Chem 152 lab. Um, so we are now demonstrating experiment number nine, okay? So in this experiment, we are doing stoichiometry and we are going to um, get the idea of a limiting reactant. So the beginning part of this experiment, what we're doing is we're gonna be taking copper two chloride dihydrate and sodium phosphate with 12 waters. Uh, and so we have pre-weighed out um, 0 0.7520 grams of copper two chloride, and we have pre-weighed out 0 0.5016 grams of the sodium phosphate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna make these into solution using deionized water, which I have to go get. Okay. And so using deionized water, we're going to bring our copper chloride into solution and our sodium phosphate. So using a glass stirring rod, we are going to speed up the process of having these go into solution. And you can see the copper two chloride has a very nice teal color. So now that this is in solution, we're going to then get our sodium phosphate in the solution. This one takes a little longer. So this chemical reaction is similar to the reaction that we were doing in experiment number eight when we were looking at um, the solubility. So we're doing an example of a double displacement reaction. The difference is that in doing a stoichiometry problem is we now want to quantitatively determine the amount of product that we're going to produce from this chemical reaction. Okay, so our sodium phosphate is now in solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix these two solutions together. And as you can see, when we mix these two solutions together, we formed a precipitate. This precipitate is what we're gonna try to quantitatively measure at the end of the experiment. But we wanna make sure that all of the copper two chloride was added to our sodium phosphate to ensure that all of it has a chance to react. And we'll stir this for a couple minutes just to make sure that all the copper chloride and sodium phosphate have a chance to react with each other. Now, to be able to measure how much copper phosphate, because that is the precipitate that we produce, is produced, we're gonna need to be able to weigh the copper phosphate. But as you can see, there's water here, there's spectator ions, there's lots of other things there that would throw off the weight. So we need to remove the solution, the spectator ions from the copper phosphate. To be able to do that, we're gonna use a process called filtration, and we're gonna be using vacuum filtration. But before we do that, these crystals are so small that if we were to pour them directly into our vacuum filtration, it would go through the filter paper. So our next step that we're going to do is we're going to heat this up to about 300 degrees. And the purpose of this is we're making the crystals get larger so that way when we filter it, it's not going to go through the filter paper. And so, magically, we have now heated the sample. And as you can see, we can see the separation and these larger crystals up top. Now it's ready to actually be doing the vacuum filtration. Okay. So over here, we have our vacuum filtration apparatus set up. So the first thing we always wanna do before filtering, remember, is we wanna wet the filter paper. Now we're ready to turn on the vacuum. And we always wanna slowly turn it on so we don't accidentally rupture our filter paper. And so when we see a nice vacuum, you can see the water is pulled through immediately. There we go. So now we're going to add the copper phosphate to the filter paper. And 
if you look at the filtrate that's coming through, you can see it's a clear bluish color. And we want to think about the color to help us think about what was our limiting reactant versus the one that we have in excess. So we're going to let this pass through. 